The ban on social media app TikTok has been extended yet again in the U.S. A federal judge stepped in to halt the Trump administration's order just hours before Google and app were set to remove the popular app from their app stores, buying parent company ByteDance more time to draw out a deal with Oracle and Walmart. Let's bring in Abhishek Prakash. He is a geopolitical futurist who's been tracking this case very closely for us. Abhishek, it's great to have you on today. I think there's a lot of people who are following this saying, you know, where does this all leave us? Because we've still got a November 12th deadline on the table here to completely ban TikTok. We've got an extension as a result of this order. Where does that leave, leave us in the deal making? Well, we're really pushing things back more. Last Sunday, there was an injunction to stop WeChat from being banned. And just yesterday, it was TikTok. But there's really no clarity yet as to whether the deal between TikTok, Oracle, and Walmart will even be approved by Cepheus, and whether or not China will approve the deal. Because as of right now, ByteDance will still retain control of the algorithm, which, as you know, is at the heart of TikTok. I, I also kind of want to touch on the the SMIC ban that uh, we're seeing, or or the talk in the U.S. of kind of uh, an SMIC ban, basically uh, the chip uh, maker in China and how reliant they are on foreign technologies to really allow them to build out the chips that they need. How much of a blow is this going to be to China's kind of nascent chip industry, uh, and what kind of retaliation do you think the U.S. can expect as a result of this? Uh, not necessarily ban, but I guess roadblock. Well, this is really a nuclear card that the U.S. has played because unlike Huawei or even TikTok, which are companies, SMIC is really a foundation. It's a foundation for China to build self-driving cars, advanced smartphones, AI, autonomous capabilities within its military, space technologies. So we're really talking about a company that's expected or was expected to power the next era of China and now the U.S. has really targeted the heart of that. So the ball now is in China's court as to how much pressure does it now want to put on the U.S. Abhi, sir, this is Inas here. Um, is this just the beginning? Are we just scratching the surface when it comes to this fight over tech? I mean, how will this play out for other companies, Chinese companies looking to go public, American firms in China? Well, this is the new status quo of geopolitics. Tech is now driving things. And there is an entire cohort of next generation Chinese technology firms who are watching what's happening with their quote unquote big brothers like Huawei and TikTok and are realizing that they now have to operate by a different set of business rules, rules that are being essentially defined by geopolitics and geoeconomic competition. And that means that these companies, the corporate strategies may change. Instead of investing most of their resources and time in the West, the key battlefields may now be in Africa, parts of Asia, and parts of South America. I mean, I'm sure you could argue that's already happening, um, especially when you look at emerging markets like India. We have seen the Alibabas and the Googles of the world really fighting it out over the last several years. Um, when, when you talk about the unpredictability of foreign companies to do business here in the U.S. under the administration. How far do you think a national privacy policy would go to at least address the concerns so there is some kind of template in place for foreign companies like a ByteDance that are looking to enter the U.S.? Well, if we look at the deal between TikTok and Oracle and Walmart, a key focus of that deal is data. Where will data be stored? And it's right now, as of the, the, the deal itself, it'll be stored in the US. But the key challenge here is that the algorithm is still in China. So no matter what kind of privacy template and guidance there may be, companies are now operating in what's best for their countries. Governments are behaving in more nationalistic ways than ever before. And there's no incentive to really play ball by either side. So even in this case, if TikTok has to still work, the data has to leave the U.S. at some point to be analyzed by the algorithm. So you can see the gray areas surrounding anything to do with privacy.
But um, Abishar, I, I mean, it, it looks like that the U.S. is essentially taking a page out of China's playbook when you look at what they are trying to achieve through TikTok. You're talking about data localization as one issue. I mean, is that what we're headed towards? Just It's a new era where the U.S. is essentially doing to Chinese firms what China has been doing to American firms. And this creates the space for the U.S. to behave in more of a protectionist manner instead of a less of a rules-based uh, uh, playing field. And, and the question in front of American companies should now be that if America is going to play this way with China, how is China going to play with, let's say, IBM or Apple? Abhishek, what uh, other, I guess, technology firms or, or other technologies could we expect to then see fall into this kind of Cold War uh, economic Cold War, more or less, between the U.S. and China? Do we think more firms are going to be struck? And do you think some of the big name tech firms here in the U.S. are going to be hurt in China through sales? Well, right now we've seen two key technologies enter the tech war, 5G and now chips. I think we're also going to end up seeing industrial robots because there's a huge set of tensions brewing between the EU, where a lot of industrial robotics companies are based, and China. We're also going to see venture capital come under increased scrutiny. And on top of that, you have space. You have anything to do with space where both of these countries are competing. As for how China is going to respond, a key difference to keep in mind is that America taking this step towards SMIC doesn't necessarily affect many American companies. But if China were now to take steps against Apple or IBM, it now is losing access to critical technologies, jobs, investment. So China has to play and look at things from both sides. Abhishek Prakash, a geopolitical futurist, joining us from Toronto. Some good insight there. Appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me.